Welcome to Chantry's Pantry. This is episode number one. Um, today we're going to be doing carnitas tacos in the crock pot. So, hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of salt in the mortar and pestle here. So that'll help grind everything up. Then we're going to put a little bit of black pepper. I don't, I don't measure. It's all kind of by look. I'll show you guys as I go. That's just a little bit of oregano leaves. Just a little bit of some chili powder. Not a whole lot. And then we're going to put some minced garlic in there as well. Let me grab a spoon. So what it's going to look like is that. We've got the salt on the bottom, and then we're just going to take everything and mix it together. Alright, and then when it's done it should look like a real nice paste. Um, and it's kind of a ratio you want it about one part salt, one part pepper, two parts oregano, half a part chili powder, and one part garlic. So it's going to come out to be a, a paste like this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pat dry our pork roast and then rub this on the side. All right. Now I've got two pork roasts, but it's not going to make a big difference. Process is still going to be the same. And they're the same kind of roast, I just had one in the fridge. So we're just going to take some paper towel and pat them dry. It's, you know, you guys have seen this done before. It's pretty simple. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that rub we made. Just give these a nice coating. You don't want to go too thick because this is a kind of strong rub. So smear it on there with your hands. Don't be afraid about going a little too thin because this is just for the sear that we're going to do in the cast iron. Once we're done with that, it's going to go into the crock pot with some other seasonings. So don't worry about being not enough seasoning. This will be plenty, trust me. So we're just going to go in on both of these little roasts and get a nice coating. And don't be afraid to, like I said, smear it around. Don't be afraid. If, you're, if you feel like you're under seasoning, go ahead and put a little bit more on. Um, I don't like a whole lot of this rub on there. I like just enough to give it a little bit of flavor. I don't want this overpowering everything else. So we're going to leave it at that for a minute. I'm going to turn the camera off and wash my hands. Alright, so I've moved you over to the side of my stove. I've got my cast iron skillet. This is a 14 or a 12 inch lodge uh, cast iron. This was actually my grandpa's, so it's got a real nice season in there. And if there's interest, I can go over a video, or I can do a video on how to properly care for a cast iron. I actually have two of them. Um, my wife just bought me this little one for Christmas. And it's a Lodge 8 inch, 6 inch, something like that. So if there's interest, I can go over that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this on a medium high heat. And we are going to put just enough oil in the bottom so that when that starts getting warm, we can we can roll that around and get some nice coating on that bottom of that skillet. So, not quite warm yet. Alright, so I paused the recording for a minute. And we see, you see how that oil is just barely starting to move by itself? That's when you know it's getting warm. So if we pick the pan up, you can see 
turn the overhead light on, you can see how that oil kind of moves by itself real quick. Flows almost like water. So that's when you know your oil is getting warm. And we want, we want this olive oil almost smoking before we throw those pork roasts in. We want them to sear on the outside real quick, but not very, not heat the center up too much. We just want it seared on the outside. So, one of the reasons I like cast iron is you can hold your hand up here like this and you can feel that heat. I can, I can still feel, feel heat right here, almost, almost eight inches off the, the skillet. So that's that's why I like cast iron is you get a good even heat. There's no hot spots. It's all just a nice heat. So I'm gonna pause the video real quick. Oh, never mind. I'm starting to see smoke. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you see that little bit of shimmer right there? That is some smoke. So I'm gonna grab one of these roasts. And that's what we want to hear, that nice sizzle as soon as that meat hits the pan. We're just going to sear this on all four sides, and then I'm going to throw this other roast in when this one's done. So I've already turned this once, but I'll, I'll turn it with you guys this time. And what I'd like to use is I have this big fork that I like to use. You can use this pair of tongs, I just use this because that's what I like to use. So we're, we're looking for this little bit of, of char brown. You don't want it burnt, you don't want it no color. You just want a little bit of color coming into that outside. You want to form a little bit of a crust. Sometimes what you need to do is tip that cast iron to get that oil moving. In. And that usually happens if your if your stove isn't quite level, which mine isn't. All right, so this is going to be tricky for me because I got to do it one-handed, but. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this roast and go straight over to the cat to the Dutch oven with it. And then I'm going to bring in this next one and do the exact same with it. Down in the pan, roll that oil a little bit, get a nice sear. All right, so I just flipped this one. And again, got to get that oil on there. Sometimes you can just pick up your pan and shake it. You got to be careful with cast iron because where the whole thing is iron, this handle does get kind of warm. Um, I'm kind of used to it, but if it's one of the first times you've ever cooked with cast iron, make sure you're careful. Use a hot pad. If your pan starts looking dry like this, like mine is, don't be afraid to add a little more oil. It's not going to hurt you a little bit like that. Give that a second to warm up. And just roll that pan again. Alright, this is definitely the better of the better looking of the two roasts. I'm gonna zoom in and see if I can't let you guys see that a little bit better. If it'll focus. Apparently it's not gonna. Well, we'll just do it the old fashioned way. So you can, you can kind of see how that crust is starting to form. And you can see it's just barely on the surface. It's not deep at all. That's what we're looking for. So again, we're going to pick this up, bring it right over here, and into the cast or the uh, Dutch oven. All right, so I've, I've switched my, cut, my workspace over here real quick. What we're going to do now is I'm going to juice one lime and two oranges, possibly three, depending on how much we get out of there. So let me grab my knife and we'll get those cut open. I always like to roll my citrus on the cutting board before I cut it. Just helps get that juice flowing out a little easier so you don't have to push quite so hard on the juicer. And you don't have to use a juicer, you can just squeeze it over the crock pot there. But I like to do it this way because then I don't have to worry about seeds and pulp and all that fun garbage. So, one lime will give you 
you know, just a little bit there, not a lot, but it's it's enough that is that's what you need. And again, with the orange, you can either roll it on the surface or just kind of squeeze it in your hands. And with these oranges, make sure you take that sticker off and wash your fruit. Because we are going to actually put the whole orange in the crock pot for a little bit. The, the rind, that is. Because that rind has some good flavor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this stem is pulled off. And then I'm just going to drop this in the crock pot. Go ahead and do that with both of your oranges. And then my juicer isn't quite the greatest, so I, get, I always end up having to kind of push the pulp aside so I can get all the juice. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this liquid and dump it in on the cr over top of the meat in the crock pot. All right, let me pull you over and show you what that looks like now. So I've got the oranges and the meat and then the juice I poured over top and then what I like to do here is I'll take just a little bit more garlic about the same amount we used before and just kind of drop it in there. Alright and then we're going to come back in and sprinkle just a little bit of salt. And this is just a bamboo salt cellar that I got from, I don't remember where I got it. A little bit of black pepper. And then just a bit more of that oregano. Turn your crock pot on high for four hours and let her go. And we'll see you in about four hours. All right, so I'm gonna try his tacos. We'll see if they're up to snuff. Mmm, I love tacos. Mm. Well, I'm guessing seeing as how Mason is devouring a taco and not talking, it must be pretty good, so. I'm hoping that's thumbs up number one for mm. the video, so. All right guys, have a good one, thanks for